Okay, so we're we're accepting accepting some user input. We saw that it's not very permanent. What happens is that a variable is just that. It's variable. It's not permanent. So we're relying on using an impermanent thing to display permanent content. There's a better way to do this. Uh, this is an HTML5 construct known as local storage. Local storage is like a modern cookie. And a cookie is just a, a way to save a little piece of information. Local storage is better because it can save more information and it travels along with the website itself, so to speak. And uh, it would work well in our case here because we want to save the user's name and pull it up automatically whenever the user comes back. It'll remember who came back to the site and show their name appropriately. Let's take a quick little segue. If you look up local storage, you'll see plenty of articles about it over at Mozilla website and W3Schools, all over the place. And everyone will tell you how it works. And it's pretty basic, pretty simple. We can set a local storage object and we can retrieve one. So we're going to see some syntax that looks like local storage dot set item um, name of the object value of the object so we have the local storage uh, object in JavaScript set item method and then we need to define what's the name of this so-called variable my cat what are we putting in that variable Tom so we're setting a local storage object. To retrieve it, we will see then that we've got uh, get local storage. Set item, get item. And then we're going to see that there are also shortcuts. Instead of writing it in that syntax over and over, there are shortcuts. So here's another take on the same thing. Same sort of thing where it says local storage, notice the way it's spelled, capital S, dot set item, capital I. What's the name of the variable? What's the value in the variable? To retrieve it, we've got get item, and we simply reference the name of the object. So whatever is in that variable, that local storage object, get it, and in this case display it as HTML. The shortcut is, you can do it like this. To store, you say local storage dot the name of your object equals the value of your object. That is equivalent to what we have up here. Local storage dot set item, the name of the item, comma, the value of the item. That is equivalent to this. And we're going to use the shorter way because then to retrieve it, we simply say local storage that last name. Let's retrieve the value of the object that we stored locally. This is permanent. We shut down the browser, we open it up, it's still there. A variable will go away. A variable will 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 empty out when the code runs again. So the name will, will it'll never remember your name. It'll only remember it as long as the, the page is open with a variable. With local storage, it's permanent. Now, there's a version called session storage, which behaves like a plain old variable, which we don't want because that's temporary. We want to use local storage. So the way we will do this is we need to refine our code. We're using a variable which is impermanent. I'm going to copy that line and paste it right under itself and then comment out that one. That's the plain old way to do it via variables. I want to do it the new way via local storage. Local storage dot username. Everything else is the same because I'm still asking for the username via prompt. I'm still stripping out the invalid characters and then I'm saving that into the more permanent username object of local storage.
Now what we need to do though, whenever we want to call what's in username, we have to say local storage dot username. So that means we need to fix it here and we need to fix it there. Username no longer works. So you have no variable called username anymore. We've got a local storage object called username. And we have to reference it via the whole thing. So that will change our code there. We need to specify the object of local storage and the particular uh, the particular particular object, username, whatever we call these things. Local storage saves strings. So if we need to do fancy things, we have to stringify and parse. But at the moment, we won't worry about it. We're we're saving the name. This should work as is. Let's see. Console is telling me John. Display is John. But it's working via local storage. If I... Um, we're not quite there yet, but if I refreshed it, the name would still be there. That hasn't quite been programmed yet. It is saved in there. We can confirm that by looking at the resources, the local storage file. So internally, the web browser is saving that value, John. It's not displaying it. We haven't programmed that. But if you're curious, we're in the console of the developers panel. And if it's hidden, there should be a resources tab. If you don't see resources, it's hidden in the double arrow. Select resources. And here's where you can look at all of the Web SQL databases, IndexedDB databases, cookies, session storage, local storage. Inside of local storage, this particular file has a key of username and a value of John. It did create the local storage object and saved it. Just for fun, I changed my code to create a username 2, and it saved it, and the original username is still there. So it's like a cookie in that it sticks around. If we look up the specification, we see that these things can hold, I think, like 5 megabytes of data, whereas an original cookie saves like 100 kilobytes or 5 kilobytes or something, a really small amount of data. This can save much more and multiple of them can be created as, as necessary. This is a kind of a way to touch upon a little bit of working with permanent data, vaguely database-ish. But when we get to it next month in, in detail, we will use index DB, which is a, going to be a way for us to save much more data, much more, much more robust data. Local storage is a very simple key-value pair. Um, that we can use and retrieve. And that was our change to our code right there. Yes? Can you say on video audio and on the local storage? You can if it's within the limits, which I think is 5 megabytes. And also, if the data, like a picture, is saved in, you know, as, as a as string data, if it's, you know, a base64 encoded string of data, um, it can. It's not the best way to use the local storage for that. There's other ways, like the other databases we'll talk about. But in theory, you could. It can. It can save. 
that stuff, but it, it has to be first encoded. The PNG has to be encoded into a, a string of base64 encoded data, which is just going to be you know random letters and numbers that represent the ping, and then that data can be saved in the local storage object. Sure. Okay, so um, we've tried to do a little bit of uh, error checking with input. I also want to deal with, remember you can click OK, and nothing will get put into the box, and it'll accept it. You can press cancel and all of that. So um, what I want to do is a little bit of a little bit more error checking. If there's no valid name, then don't display anything. It's going to want to display comma exclamation point, even with an invalid name. So I want to do a little bit of error checking here. This will be some simple if else statements. If bad input, don't use it. If good input, then use it. So let's write this before before printing to the screen. We need to check if we have valid input. So I will write the skeleton of if, open close parentheses, open curly brace, enter, close curly brace, space else, open curly brace, close else, curly brace if else. There's basically two things that can happen here. We're checking if something is going to be true. If it's true, then it will do what's in the first block. If it's not true, it must be false. So then it'll do what's in the else block. Either something will be true, do this, or it'll be false, or else do that. This is one very basic way to do error checking. There's many other ways. We've got that for loop, we've got switch case, we've got try, catch, we've got different ways to, to check um, for conditions. This is a conditional statement. On a certain condition, do the following. So we have um, oftentimes three possibilities here. Someone leaves the box empty, there could be a null result, or there could be an undefined result. So we're going to say here, local storage, Actually, I recommend copy and paste this because we're going to type it a few times. We're going to check what's in that local storage object a few times before we do anything about it. So we're going to say local storage equals equals quote end quote. Single equal we're seeing is basically take the thing on the right, put it into the thing on the left. Single equal. Double equal is Compare. Compare the thing on the right with the thing on the left. If local storage has a value of nothing, we've reached truthiness. Um, so it could be that local storage is empty, like this, or that it's not empty. That's the if, that's the else. But what could happen is that a person could cancel. If it's canceled, then it's null. So I want to check, well, is it empty, or is it null, or is it undefined, or something else? So what I'll do is actually, let's wrap parentheses around this. This is sort of like the order of operations when it's 1 plus 2 times 3 divided by 4 there is a specific value, I mean the specific order that you have to do that in, you have to do division first, multiplication, left to right, all of that. So if we put parentheses around this, we, we can force to this happen, this statement to be evaluated first. I want to check, is this statement true or false? Space, notice I'm still in the, I'm still in the outer parentheses of the if. Space there, and then we'll type or. We're going to say either this, or this, or this. And or is written with two pipe characters. Pipe characters are backslashes that you have pressed shift. They're right next to the square, uh, right next to the square bracket. There's a backslash. If you shift backslash, you get pipe, a vertical character. You need two of them, no space. That means or. If this is true, or this is true, 
another couple parentheses here, local storage again, equals equals, null, So if local storage is full of nothing, or local storage is full of no, or one more, undefined, then we have bad input. So another or, another parentheses, another local storage check, this time undefined. We're checking three possibilities at once here. There could be other possibilities as well that we'd have to think about. That's what beta testing is all about. There's so many ingenious fools. Hopefully you can see that it's a long line. So I'm checking three possibilities. Um, I'm curious well, I guess it doesn't matter. We have console log up here. I was going to say, I'm curious to see what did the person write, but it's already being outputted up there. Um, so I'll, I'll have it alert and tell the, the person, tell the user uh, invalid input or wrong name or something, some sort of message. Please uh, enter a valid name. So this is within the if block. If any of these are true, do the following. Uh, if any of these are true, we've made an error. We've encountered an error in the name, in theory. If we didn't encounter any of those true conditions, if we didn't encounter any of those specific errors, then there must have been else a valid input. If there is a valid input, that is when we will display what's inside of local storage. So we, we want to move this line into the else block only allow this to be written on screen when it has met the condition of it being valid. So take that and move it into else. So you give that a try. If you put in invalid characters, I think if you just put like a question mark, it should pop up to tell you, please enter a valid name. If you put in valid characters, it should show the valid name on screen. So if I just click OK, please enter a valid name, because what was captured was empty, quote, end quote, nothing between the quotes. It's empty, so it said valid name. If I put in, uh, I guess, only, a, let's say, a, a number. If I put in numbers, numbers is not part of the character set, please enter a valid name. It's, it's stripped out the numbers, so it's, it's empty again. If I write numbers and a valid name, it'll strip out the numbers, leave the valid name, and display the valid name. And I think lastly, if we cancel, uncaught type error cannot read property and replace. What does that do? Nothing. Okay. So that is failing on cancel. Not read property replace of null. So replace fails trying to replace null. We got two out of three. So if we get null, it automatically cannot replace null. Well, I suppose hmm, what we could do is see the importance of beta testing. What about if we make it replace at the end? That's 
one possible way. It's perhaps not the best. I'm having it do replace at the moment that I'm going to display it. So it is accepting any crazy thing that they put in. It is saving it into local storage, which might not be the safest. But at the moment that I'm about to place it, notice I moved replace dot replace. I moved that away from the moment of prompt. Because replace can't replace a null object. It's null. You get the error. Here it replaces it at the moment that we need it. How much would we have to rewrite about all of this if? A, a lot of it. Right? But does that still allow us up here if we still leave? No, we don't do anything. If it's not equal to no, we won't allow it to do anything. Okay, let's give that a try. Um, let me comment all of this out for a moment. We leave that as is. Simply not uh, local storage equals not null? No, we can change local storage dot username not equal to null. And if we don't want to come up. Oh, okay, so we are we are doing the whole just doing the same thing but instead of equal to is none. Spell anything. Not equal to empty, not equal to null, not equal to undefined, and replaces. Okay, and then the HTML right. Unless I mistyped it, it's still not liking that we are passing uh, null into it. It's not even going to accept it. It's like we're using the wrong method. We, we, we simply don't seem to be able to use the replace method upon null, and it just crashes at that point. It's move, right? When you click cancel, right away it passes back null. Yeah. Okay. So if it's not new, then do it. Did you get yours to work in that? Can I take a quick look at your code? Maybe I can state something. So that's it. 
But I think what's happening here is when we're getting this, it's not doing anything, but it's also like crashing all our code because we're getting subsequent JavaScript. And I think at this point it'll just crash the result. This is doing it just before you after the time this. As soon as we as soon as that point. Yeah. It doesn't even get to the host. What if you go to your hit and then have it say something in your console? Just make it say hello there. I don't think it's ever it's even gonna get to that point because it's not gonna run that hit. Snow because it's snow. So, um, yes. So the navigator, how should we put it inside the code just by itself? Yeah, I do have a quote there. Um, But it's not exactly, well, yeah, what we could do is beforehand um, set that up here, initialize that to empty, like that, so we're initializing it that way. doesn't care. So um, what probably we'll have to do is we will have to do replace secondly, capture it, then do replace once we've got it, but then capturing possibly bad input. So for the moment, I'm going to leave my code down here where I'm doing it at the moment that I need to write the HTML. I'm sure we can figure out a better way a little later, but just so that it works. Let's enter a valid name. So for the moment I'm going to leave it like this where we'll we'll do the replace of null at the last moment. Yes. I've seen some some JavaScript yeah, um, the double is that it's going to check if this object is the same as this object, regardless of its type. This type could be a type of number, and then I'm trying to compare a number with a string. If we do the triple equals, it's going to compare. Is it also a number and a number? The data type, exactly. You got it? You got it to work? Okay. So your console, but your console is not complaining about. Oh, cool. Let me check yours one moment. Um, I don't think there's any difference with checking type as well. But yeah, the triple equal is to also check type. Um, I wasn't checking type. I, I never defined, uh, we never really set the type of local storage there, but I believe the default is string. And so um, with triple equals, <coughs> we're checking also is that string type, string type, you know. But um, we're, getting close to the end of the, we're getting close to the end of the day. I'll check your code in just a moment because I want to do one more thing, which is that uh, the, the name, we're seeing the name is being saved, it's being stored permanently, but when you do refresh the browser, it, it does go away. I want that it does remember my name from session to session. 
Uh, so that's just going to be a little bit of checking. Has there been a name that has been saved? If there has been a name saved, retrieve the name and display it. If there has no name, if there has not been a name saved yet, don't retrieve any name. Wait until someone puts a name. So we'll need to check here. We'll need to create a, a way for it to check. Is there a valid name to display? We've got a function to get name, get the name from the user input. But is there a uh, is there a valid name to display? So after the end, now we're going to break out of that function of get name. In my case is line 18. We go after that function, we need to define a new function to load a name. If a name exists, load it. If a name doesn't, don't worry about it. Function load name. The trigger for this will be simply that the page loads, that the content loads. So then I'll also invoke the name of the function right away afterward. We will define load name. As soon as everything loads, try to load a name. And if we program this properly, if a person never entered a name, it'll deal with it. And if a person did enter a name, it'll deal with it. And this is going to be another if-else statement. It's basically going to be everything we did previously that whole if-else thing basically it's just all of this again because this was checking at the moment we're saving a name is it a valid name? display it actually what we won't need is the alert that'll annoy people but uh, I'm gonna copy that chunk that if-else chunk which worked a moment ago and I'm going to paste it into load name and take away this alert or else every time the browser loads up your page it's going to pop up and say enter a valid name and the user will say what what am I doing what do I need to do so this will try to load a name that exists we'll check it here if it does exist it will load it if not nothing will happen if that if is doing nothing um, I'll make it put to the console. Has there an, a name? Has a name been saved? Most likely not. That's why it, it tripped to the if portion. So the get name is being triggered by clicking a button. The load name is being triggered simply automatically as soon as the project loads. I'm going to save it. I'm going to... So you see that it is Victor. I'm going to reload it. It's Victor. I'm going to close it completely. Launch it. I'm launching it one more time from scratch, not my JavaScript. Remembered my name. I'm going to change the name to something else. I'm going to close the whole browser completely, run it again. It's invoking load name right away. There is a name to load, so it loads it. To test how this would work the very first time, you have to go over to the resources the local storage and delete those local storage objects. So I'm selecting those and there, there's a little, you can right click and delete. Now if I launch it, now the now what's happening is there is no there is no local storage, and what it's kicking out is undefined. Local storage is undefined. I have not used it yet. That was one of those or possibilities. So it doesn't say a name. There's no name to display. As soon as I give it a name, it stores it in local storage, and it'll remember from instance to instance. Close 
close it, run it, and members. And that's simply uh, another another function that runs automatically, doing the same if else checking and displaying it. <coughs> Yes. No. Lo uh, username is local storage, and it's only tied to this file. It's part of the security model that it has. In an attempt to be more secure so that you don't have cross attacks with traditional cookies, whatever's created in local storage only is accessible by this file. Um, that's good and bad, of course, because then I can't pass this data to another file. But there's ways around that that we can get to later. All right, so um, as we're seeing here, the uh, It's suddenly a Pandora's box when we start to deal with user input. In our mind, we have this perfect vision that the person is going to put their name and customize the app. But we have to think one step ahead of that and think, well, what if they put numbers or symbols or code? So we have to deal with that. And then we had the issue about permanence. We introduced local storage. This is still not quite perfect. We can still spend time to figure out every nuance of it. It's okay for the moment, but we can probably come back to it later to, full, to more fully polish it. Um, any general questions about what we've, what we've done so far? One way around it, what I did was, instead of having replace attached to prompt, I attached it to the part where it says HTML username. And then it seemed to be okay with it. Yes, it'll be affected. This local storage name, this object here, there's one instance of it in the app. So whenever you use it, you're reusing the same one. No, that should not that should not work. That was the that was a diff, that was related to the question earlier. That it's that every version of the file creates its own copy of that username, so they they would not conflict with each other. They're sandboxed per file, per app. So we're going to wrap up at this point. We didn't quite get to the part about the user agent string and that. Uh, Detecting of the uh, of the am I on desktop? Am I on mobile? What I'm going to do is uh, we might get to it at the beginning of of the next class. But here's what I want to to show you as we leave. Remember, this project uh, has been a variation of what I said earlier about vmcompost.com/sdce. Uh, if you you should know that you should be able to view the source of any any website. So if you view the source of this on the desktop, you will see what we were going to get to. So in quick quick briefly view here, there's some script that is going to check the user agent. There's the object navigator dot user agent. User agent is the is basically the identification of your web browser. And so we're checking, is there a match? Is the web browser that the person is visiting our site, 
is it an Android device or is it an iPhone device or an or a Windows phone device? If it's one of those, then show them the mobile version of the project. If else, or else it's if it's not one of those, it's most likely a desktop. Yes, I did not mention BlackBerry. I did not mention Firefox OS. I did not mention the other kinds of mobile devices. But it's simply, again, does it match Android, or does it match iPhone, or does it match IE Mobile, or does it match BlackBerry, etc., etc. If it matches any of those, it must be mobile. So the web browser location, the address, replace it with the mobile folder index file. If it didn't match that, then it must then nothing then do nothing. It's it's the desktop version. Display the desktop version. That's what we're gonna do in, in detail. But that's uh, you can see the code yourself there at the example site, vmcompass.com SDCE to page source, view page source, and you'll see that script that we we're gonna talk about. So not uh, super super important at the moment because again we're going toward creating a mobile a mobile project we've got this project that is fully functional with various screens and functionality next month next week now we're going to start to talk about all of that we need to know and all the software and setup and such to create the mobile uh, app the, the app version the android app the iphone app the, the windows app that it entails a lot more stuff it's going to be four-week-long class next month. We have a lot to talk about next month. This one was our overview about various concepts of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery Mobile. Still a lot to learn of all of those things, of course. But when we come back next month, we're going to start to look at what do we need to learn about mobile to turn this, this simple website into a fully functional app with camera features, the ability to tweet, database stuff, all of that. If you want to get a preview of what it'll look like, remember you can go over to Amazon.com, you can search My SDCE, and you can download the app that the previous students made. This is what we're going to end up with. It has the starting point of what we've done this month, and it'll have all these extra features, such as uh, She put it, yeah, right here. It'll have the ability to. Well, we're going to customize colors, of course, but it'll have the ability to save information in a database, the name of a class, any kind of data, but the the number of the class, the name of the class, the instructor. We're going to save all of that into in, into a database and retrieve it and display it and edit it and all that good stuff. That's going to be for next month. Probably also coming on to part three, depending how we go. So that's what's in store for next week. Remember, brand new class, brand new enrollment procedure. Everyone should line up on time. Maybe 20 new people want to show up for this part two, that they didn't take part one. I don't know. So be on time. We'll do the enrollment and start on this new journey. So that's it for the moment. I'm going to put my code in the network folder in just a moment. Have a little bit of lab time, and then we'll do it again next week.